Hello and welcome to this Panel Pilot Ace tutorial video. Today I'll be talking you through the trend graph element which has been added to the new beta software. So if you haven't already seen it, this video follows on very closely to the data logging video. Uh, in fact, I'll be continuing from the project we designed in that video, so either go back and, and have a watch or if you're pretty confident with your data logging stuff, uh, then just download the data logging uh, project we did in the last video from our website and you'll just be able to carry on straight away from that. So to get started the first thing I'm going to do is make some space for our trend graph so I'm just going to move this up to the top of the screen. There we go, that was nice and easy. So over here in our visual elements we've got our trend graph element which may I say looks very nice. Uh, okay so what am I going to do with it? Let's uh, set you up to take up a bit more of the screen. I'm a bit cramped at the moment. Uh, give it a bit more height. There you go. Let's just align it horizontally with the screen. There we go. There's our nice trend graph element. Okay, so first thing I'll do is I'll take you through some of the properties we have here. Uh, so the first and foremost, probably the most important, uh, is the data logging uh, property. So this needs to point to a local logging variable. So you will see, sorry, a local functional element for logging. Our logging power element is the one we're going to use here, which links to our log underscore power variable. Um, okay, so I've set that up. If we come back to our trend graph, uh, the one below that is our plot interval. So this thing has its own built-in timer that tells it how often to update and this timer, this plot interval specifies how, how long that is so this trend graph will currently update every five seconds uh, for particularly large applications you want, may want to minimize that uh, just to keep the CPU usage down but you know play around with it and see what, what works for you okay uh, and then you'll see below that there's a chart theme so the chart theme is basically color schemes, blue cerulean, you know, you've just got several different color setups and you'll notice the color properties have all disappeared now. Uh, if you do want to specify your own color scheme, then just stick with no chart theme and you'll be able to specify all of the colors. So I'll just talk you through what exactly each color is. You've got a trend graph color here. Uh, that's the actual color of the line that's going to be drawn. Uh, the background colour uh, here, which is the background of the graph, uh, it's worth noting that that is slightly different to these little squares in between the um, the grids. Uh, I'll cover that in a second. Here we've got a decimal places. Uh, so this specifies how many decimal places are displayed uh, here on the probably the x and the y axes. Um, you probably don't want this to be too high because otherwise, you know, you're going to get a lot of text to the left of the graph, it's just not going to look pretty. Um, okay, on to more colours. We've got the label colour, so this is the x-axis. Uh, now the label, well you'll see if I change it, let's make this a nice green, is these uh, numbers uh, along the axes. Uh, the axis colour itself, which is the colour of the line. And you've got the title, so let's go with a nice orange, which is the the time label here uh, and then the shade so this here you'll see is every other column uh, it's an interesting one but it allows you to alternate the colors uh, it's just a generic graphing property sorry about that uh, and then you'll notice you've got the tick count here as well so this effectively specifies how many of these divisions are displayed uh, obviously Okay, and there you have it. So let's just take a couple of those off, back to five. Uh, and then moving on to the y axis here, uh, you've got your min and max range. So for power, uh, on the emulator, our inputs are going to be between 0 and 10 volts. Uh, timesing two of those together, that gives us a range of between 0 and 100 watts that we could potentially have. So I'm just going to change the range of my graph to that. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, back to the colours. Similarly on this side you've got label, which is your numbers here. You don't have a title this side, 
Uh, you've got an axis color this side as well. It's got a nice light blue and a shade color, which is the other interval. So this could be a nice light green. Uh, yeah, and then you've got several other standard properties, opacity, transform origin, rotation clockwise, scale, layer, etc., visibility. Uh, all of these behave exactly the same as on other visual elements. Okay, what I'm going to do now is reduce the uh, the time taken for a log here, because at the moment it's set to every minute, which I'm not going to wait a minute to update my graph. I just want to do five seconds for now, uh, just so I can give you an example of it running. Also going to change some of these colors back. So let's just put you back to white for now, as well as you. Okay, so there we go. Let's just try running that. Okay, and our graph is starting off on the bottom there. I'm just going to up the input on one of them and the other one slightly. Hopefully this is going to update our power to about 14 watts. So just wait for the graph to update. There you go. We've got our new reading on the graph. Okay. And if I keep increasing this, that number should go up pretty drastically. So you'll notice the graph is currently set to update every five seconds. There you go. And we can drop that value again. Hopefully we'll see it represented in the graph. There you go. So you, yeah, you can see the trend graph running there uh, without any problems. Our average power has been updated accordingly. Um, yeah. So that's really all there is to the trend graph. So thank you very much for watching this Panel Pilot Ace tutorial video.